Uh, welcome everyone, this is Circle from Slytherin, I'll be your host for tonight as we'll be taking a look at Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager, a uh, game developed by Polar Motion in collaboration with Buzz Aldrin himself. And um, uh, the guys from Polar Motion, or in this case Ignacio, the lead developer, is also here available with us in the chat to answer any questions you might have. Uh, we'll be taking a look at the basics of the game, give you a short introduction, what the game is about, and what makes this game so cool. So, to start off, uh, we're, we're in the main menu here. Um, you can see there are both single and multiplayer modes. Uh, this game is all about space exploration. It's a historical game, so it takes place from uh, the 50s uh, until the, the moon landing itself. So, late 60s, early 70s, uh, if, if you take a bit longer. And um, it's, it's all about managing your own space program. How would you do it? Would you follow the historical path? Or would you divert and, and use some of the um, missions or try some of the projects that weren't historically tried? Um, it is also about the space race itself during the Cold War, uh, which is of course the era where the game takes place. So you can ch choose to play either as the, as the um, NASA, uh, the American Space Agency, or as the Soviet Space Agency. Uh, there's also a hypothetical global space agency which tries to examine what would have happened if um, both agencies were together. So uh, this race is very interesting in the multiplayer mode where you directly race each other to be the first guy into space, to be the first guy on the moon, uh, uh, etc. We're going to take a look at the single player here. And we're also going to start a new game. Here you can see we have three campaigns and three sandbox modes. Um, the sandbox modes give you more freedom to, to do what you want and experience, experiment with your own uh, ideas and plans. Uh, in the campaign, you're directly racing the other agency, so you'll get messages like the, if you played as the Americans like the Soviets just launched their Sputnik program. Uh, so it puts a bit of pressure on you to, to really speed up and get your act together. We're going to try here as the USA campaign great one to start at. And we're going to play normal difficulty. And then we're going to jump right in. <coughs> uh, if you have any questions about the game itself, feel free to ask them in the chat. If I can, I'll be able to answer it. Uh, can I tune down the music? Yes, I can. Right. Um, so if you have any questions about the game, um, Ask him in the chat and go ahead. If you have any comments, like turn down the music, uh, please uh, yell so and I will uh, do it. Right, so we have NASA established and we are being welcomed by Dr. Werner von Braun, uh, very famous of course. And um, we've been given the task of um, managing this, uh, the NASA space programs. We've got a budget set and we can jump right in. So here we are at the basic screen um, or the, the main uh, screen where you can see all the different buildings you have. Uh, if I click the question mark here you can see which building is what. So here we will be building an astronaut center. Uh, we got a public affairs office, we got our headquarters, uh, we got a research lab. Uh, our mission control center has yet to be built as you can see and uh, a museum we already have set, though it needs to be filled with stuff, of course. And um, we have our uh, vehicle assembly building, which also has to be built. So we're going to start by doing that now. As you can see, we are starting at the beginning. We're at 1955, first quarter, and uh, we're going to start from scratch. So first order of business will be to build up these buildings, as we're going to need them. Uh, so I'm going to build mode, and I'm going to click at the place. The Mission Control Center, a place where you manage your group of flight controllers. Yes, we want this one. And we're going to want an astronaut center as well, because we're going to experiment with different uh, manned spacecraft as well. And then our vehicle assembly building, which is used to uh, actually create or put together the different components you've researched, uh, which is vital before going uh, on any mission. So we're going to build that as well. In the meantime, we can see at the bottom here, when I remove the build mode, 
um, our budgets, our finances. Uh, with more deal two can be found here. Um, our research um, and technicians, etc. Our astronauts, which we don't have any, and it's grayed out because we cannot recruit any since our astronaut center is still building. Um, the same goes for our mission control center. And here we can see the number of uh, programs we have opened. We can open three different uh, space programs. Uh, we have none at the moment. So we're going to do that in a second. So we're going to click here to open the menu. And here we can see uh, a map of our uh, solar system with the different planets involved. And as you can see, we have all these zeros, zeros uh, here, which means that the programs on these planets are still locked. We first need to do our stuff on Earth uh, in order to get that rolling. So clicking on Earth we're gonna be able to see uh, a number of different categories for in which we can uh, experiment with these programs. So we got the crewed missions with multiple crews even um, as well as the uh, uncrewed satellites. So at first we're going to start the Explorer 1, uh, which is the first satellite the US uh, put, into, uh, put into orbit. Uh, so we're going to select this program and we're going to open it. If you um, are unfamiliar, uh, like I am actually, with most of these programs, with most of these um, names or these satellites, these uh, rockets you might use, there is always the information when you click on it and the more detailed information in what we call the buzzopedia um, so it gives you the historical background of what it is and why it's been used and why this might or might not be a proper step to uh, to take so this is a pro uh, a program we want to open now so we're gonna launch it right um, <coughs> The program consists of um, the satellite itself, which is the Explorer 1, but in order to get that into the air, we also need a booster or a rocket, uh, which is signified by the question mark here. At the moment, however, as you can see, our um, vehicle assembly building is still under construction, so we cannot start any rocket programs yet. We have to wait for that. What we can do is hire or assign some of our scientists um, to de start developing the Explorer 1. So we're going to set R&D mission components and here we can assign four scientists uh, up to four scientists uh, for the program. <coughs> we can see the reliability which is current which is only three percent which basically means we're at the start of developing this um, and we can see the maximum reliability. As you can see the maximum reliability is never 100 percent which means that there is always something uh, that can go wrong in theory, even though the chances are extremely small. Um, some of you might have noticed of the the NASA um, rocket exploding yesterday, uh, heading for the ISS. Um, these things uh, can happen, and uh, this is also in game, so you're never a hundred percent sure um, of your missions. So we're going to see if we have some scientists available that are have decent enough qualities to <coughs> get this program started and so here we can see that these are the um, uh, researchers we currently have hired in our uh, program we can have up to seven we currently have five and they all have five different uh, skills and uh, percentage to signify how skilled they are in this thing they also have their own salary costs they have their motivation and their uh, intelligence. So in this case our best skilled um, man is uh, Aiden Logan uh, so we're gonna let him start researching this although we might also need him to start doing some uh, research some rockets later on. And we're gonna get, have him assisted by Jake Ray. Right, um, as you can see we can have up to three programs um, at the same time and uh, we only have one program opened at the moment so we're going to open a second one and in this case I want to open the program for the space planes which I personally really think is really cool so we have the X-15 experimental space plane and with it we're going to do test um, and reach uh, 
height records and speed records. Uh, this will be a great test also, a great experience for our astronauts as well. Um, so we're gonna open this program and, and also we're gonna assign some uh, people to it. Unfortunately we don't have uh, a lot of very skilled people here yet, uh, it's always more difficult in the beginning. Uh, we're gonna see if we can hire two more that will be able to help us. So I'm going to the hiring screen and this is the pool uh, I can select from. Um, preferably someone who is good with rockets, who will come very in very handy later on. I'm going to take the risk on Benjamin. And um, someone who is good with um, crude spacecraft. And these are difficult to find. Let's try Jason Falcon. So we're going to hire these two. Uh, we're already on our maximum. Ten. So after undergoing basic training, the recruits will be available for assignment. And we have one unassigned. Uh, I did this on purpose, which is Dalton My Myers. He's not doing anything at the moment. He is available, as you can see. Uh, so we're going to send him to advanced training, just to uh, show you this. And we're going to tr train him in uh, space probes. We're going to make him our specialist on space probes. So we're going to increase his skill. It costs some money. Um, returns is a high improvement um, in his ability. So it will pr hopefully uh, pay off later on. So we're going to set a single training course or we can set a continuous training course. In this case, we're going to set a single one. Uh, a continuous one means you can um, set a target skill level like I want you to keep training until you have this 85 90 uh, whatever percentage of skill level we're gonna do a single one because we need him as fast as possible again right so now in our first turn in Q1 1955 we have opened two programs uh, which we can see here and we have assigned our scientists to what to do and we started building some of the buildings in our space complex so we're going to end the season with that and see what next turn brings. Right. Um, so here we see our research. Um, we, are, we are starting developing these uh, two uh, programs where we assigned our scientists to. So you can see the reliability go up. The green one is the progress we made last turn. Um, ideally you'd want uh, about 80% reliability uh, before uh, you start launching it. You can do it before if you want, I mean there's nothing holding you back but there's of course uh, a great risk involved and it will deduct, uh, it will cost you significant prestige which you need in order to get fundings. So here we see our end turn messages and as you can see we have a big one in red and that says that this program opened by the opposing faction and uh, the opposing faction here of course is the Soviet Space Agency which has also started the uh, uh, satellite program, the Sputnik 1 and also a space plane program, the PKA space plane so we're going uh, pretty head to head for now and as you can see we have we started the construction and uh, one of them is actually already finished namely the mission control center which was finished in one turn we choose to go to the moon so here we have a part of the speech of Kennedy addressing us why we need to go to the moon and this is what what this campaign is all about beating the Soviets in this case uh, to the uh, to be the first on the moon Right, so we have our budget for four years, which is fine. Very well. So here we go to the public affairs office uh, for a second to show you. Um, this game is all about getting... Uh, I mean, you have to pay for all your programs, obviously, and the salaries of your people. In order to do that, you need, the, um, you need to show that you can book results. And this is done with the prestige. As you can see, I have 250 prestige at, at the moment. Um, and every four year your budget will be reevaluated. So if you've gained a lot of prestige, you'll get more money. Uh, if you gain little prestige, you'll get less. Um, 
in this case in order to get the maximum budget.